What's going on guys? This is Martyrs Brigade 99 coming to you once again with another session of Dark Souls PvP. <clears throat> Alright guys, this time around I kind of got a treat for you. This particular time, um, I'm going to go ahead and battle my parry partner, good old short dude 123. In the video that I like the title, Rumble in the Jungle Volume 1. <laughs> Alright guys, now... To the extent that you guys are uh, familiar with the channel, you guys would know that I have fought this guy on countless times and um, a number of some of my previous videos. And this guy is super awesome, right? At least I consider him to be super awesome. He's really good with those parries, right? And if you guys have noticed some of my vids, I mean, that guy sometimes would kind of pop me off with the parry like twice in one match. That's how effective he is. Well, you know, I mean, I kind of uh, proposed something out there to him in the past. I said, hey, dude, let's kind of do a Rumble in the Jungle or a Clash of the Titans type vid. And he said, okay, cool. Now, the reason why I didn't do the Clash of the Titans, I didn't keep consistent with that title, is because that title is kind of relative to good old MC Biff stuff, right? So, to the extent the good old Short and I have another one of these sessions... I like to keep a title that will be consistent with both he and I. Alright, now, let me kind of give you a quick backdrop on this uh, particular fight. In the very beginning, <laughs> you know, we were kind of talking. I'm like, hey dude, let's kind of go over to the Moonlight Butterfly and have some bouts. So he's like, okay, cool, let me go get my PvP uh, build. You know, so good old Short come out with his Dark Moon Blade, right? So I'm thinking like, what the, f you know. Okay, dude, you want to get you a buff? Are you serious? So I pulled out, you know, my optimized build. Now, if you guys are familiar with my first impressions of a new build, <laughs> you guys should understand the tactics that I have used with this build. Did you guys just see how much damage he inflicted with that repost? <laughs> So, I don't know. I mean, I kind of asked him. I said, hey, dude, are you trying to hit me with the DMB and the Hornet? Because that was a whole lot of vitality. Needless to say, after I hit him with the Tranquil Walk, you know, you know, he hits me with the, you know, WTF. He's like, look, dude, did you just hit me with a Tranquil Walk? And I'm like, of course I did. You hit me with the Dark Moon Blade. I'm hitting my optimized build, too. So, you know, we have gotten to the point to where we said, okay, this is what we'll do. Um, and I think it was after this match. Because, I mean, I mean, let's just keep it honest, guys. Anyone who is fighting against a Dark Moon Blade, especially a 2 or 3, your, your goose is pretty much cooked, Chief. Right? Because either you will die quick, or you will just receive a whole bunch of damage in trying to dodge the attacks until the buff is over. So this is why I will not, especially in a, in a range type of thing, I would not fight a buff user. I simply will not do it. Now, on regular invasions, I will buff the crap out of whatever weapon I have if I choose to do so. But if it's some type of arrangement, am I going to do that? No, that's just me personally. So what we agreed to do after that what was that the third match he said okay this is what we'll do i'll keep the buffs but let's just kind of you know put some restrictions on it how about resins so i'm like okay you know that's fair enough i won't use my optimized build and you won't use your high speed dark moon blade all right all right so that's the little backstory <laughs> at least on the first three matches all right so we're gonna go ahead and tighten up the stone giant And this is one of the better arenas, in my personal opinion, for one-on-one -on -one bouts. I like this area. I've pretty much run into some really good players here when trying to PvP against other players. <clears throat> Alright. So it looks like he's using the Wolf Ring. Alright, so I'm, I'm going to imagine that he probably has right, probably around 53 boys. I'm assuming those are the Black Iron Gauntlets that he's using. And the Black Iron Gauntlets, I think they give you 16 boys. So that, in addition to the Wolf Ring, will give you about 56, which is sufficient. 
All right. Now I'm using the high speed chaos blade. And actually, I'm going to switch it up a couple times. You know, I'm not really into katanas, even though nowadays it seems as though, you know, every player I fight against has got a katana. <laughs> All right? Like 90%, well, I can't really say 90, that's kind of overdoing it. But I will say a good number of players out there are hitting off with those katanas. I don't know. I'm, I don't know if it's that I'm not good with them. Or that I haven't used them enough to at least get good with them. I don't know. But I'm not really one of those katana guys. Either I like to pop you off with the rapier. Or with one of the great swords. You know like the bastard sword. The man serpent sword. Or the clay. Alright. So in this particular video. I am using two builds. And I'm going to use my. Uh, pyromancer. Uh, I think her name is like the Chaos Witch or something like that. I think that's the name that I gave her. In addition to the Wicked Witch, <laughs> which is the new build that I just featured in one of my more recent videos. And those are the only two builds that I will be using for this particular match. Where I kind of switch it up a little bit. Now, the advantage that I have with the Pyro build is that I have 45 Dexterity. Uh, which is good for my dexterity weapons. In addition to um, the 45 dexterity giving me an added benefit for the castings. Right? For, um, for some of you guys who are kind of unfamiliar, to the extent that you have a pyro build, 45 dexterity will give you the fastest casting speed. All right, so there's my stats uh, for this particular build. Now, you guys may say to yourself, dude, why in the world do you have 47 endurance? And here's why. Because actually what I should have done is added about 12 or 13 to vitality, thereby giving me 60 and just leaving it at 35 endurance. The reason why I have 47 endurance was because I intended to wear the same equipment Right or similar equipment, I can't really remember. I haven't used this build in a long time, but without the flip ring, my intent was to use the regular roll, right? The regular fast roll. But for whatever reason, I think the reason why I switched was because it was kind of difficult for me to hit that roll BS with that regular fast roll. So that's why I just went on ahead and went to the dark wood grain ring. You know, and actually I started to redo the build, you know, just so I can get it exactly at the stats that I wanted, you know, with the uh, either 59 or 60 fatality. But the thing is, I mean, who in the world want to go through this game twice to get a second iteration of greater combustion? I mean, I don't, right? It's hard enough trying to go through the game once, let alone twice, just to get another casting. Alright, so basically, I mean, I think this is a good build, but do I think it's optimized? No. Because since I had the Darkwood Grain Ring with the Havel's Gauntlets and Boots, basically I only needed 35 Endurance as opposed to the 47 Endurance. All right, but I don't know. Maybe one day in the future when I get bored, I might redo the build again. But do I see myself doing it over? No. All right. Alright. Speaking of builds... I was thinking about doing a montage uh, titled The Martyr's Brigade. <laughs> right? Now, what exactly would that title imply? What I was going to do is just put a montage of all the builds that I have. Right? So I, it would include material with my uh, battle caster, my pyro build my strength build that you guys have recently saw in my uh, Glorious Covenant montage, my Vitality build, my, I mean all the builds, it would just feature material from all of them, right? And that would just be titled The Martyr's Brigade, but I don't know. <laughs> Sometimes you kind of get carried away with these montages, but I don't know, I just like them, they're cool. So we'll see about that, that might be one of those projects I kind of put on the on the back shelf and kind of collect dust we'll see all right back to business so if you guys notice my great combustion is popping them off with just under 500 damage 
And I'm assuming that it's because of his armor selection, right? Because I am not using the Dragon Crest ring. I think that's the one that is called the one that boosts sorcery. I'm actually not using that. The rings that I'm using are the favor and protection, as you guys can see, by the golden arrow. Or the yellowish golden, whatever uh, color you want to call it. Um, and you obviously see me with the Darkwood Grain Ring. So, I mean, what I started to do is to take off the Favor and Protection Ring and then just use the Dragon Crest with the Darkwood Grain Ring. But I think that would have torched them with those pyros, so I just decided not to. But I think just under 500 damage is sufficient. Now... Let's talk about tactics with regard to fighting against short dude. One thing that I know about this guy is that he's really good on those blind parries. Uh, and actually, I'm not going to shortchange him. He's also good with the setup parries as well. Right, so he's especially dangerous. Now, weapons to consider when playing against a guy that's pretty good at parrying. In my personal opinion, do not approach this guy with a great sword. Because he probably gets a hard on once he sees you with a great sword. Right? Because in most cases, at least in my experience, he can parry you like on the first swing with those great swords. <laughs> right? So this is why in this particular bout I said, you know what, I'm going to use some of the faster weapons. You know, the balder, the weapon that I have in hand. I use the chaos weapon and I use the uh, butterfly horn. Uh, number one, I use the butterfly horn because of the distance. Even though, I mean, it's the damage that it inflicts pretty much sucks. I mean, you guys saw it, I think, in two of the previous bouts, and you will see it in, I think, a couple of the final bouts. I mean, that thing only pop them off for like 200 damage, so it sucks. And that's 200 damage with 44 intelligence, right? So it's not like, I mean. If I would have evolved from 44 to 50, you know, it kind of would have went from 200 damage to 500. I mean, the weapon just sucks. But as with most spears, your benefit comes. You see that? That was 659. <laughs> uh, as I was saying, as with most spears, the advantage uh, that you get with the spear is maintaining a distance. Um, and pretty much really quick attack speeds. All right. Now, that's one thing that I kept running into. And later on, I kind of figured out what to do against them in that Wrath of Gods. If you guys notice, it takes a lot of my vitality. One reason, I believe, is because... <clears throat> excuse me. As you guys know, the Crown of Dusk makes you vulnerable to sorceries. All right? And magics. So what I'm thinking is the reason why it takes, uh, well actually it inflicts so much damage is because I have the Crown of Dusk. Which is probably the same reason why he uh, receives so much damage with my Great Combustion. I don't know. And actually those things are quite handy when you need a clutch move. <laughs> Alright. Back at it. So yeah, as I was saying, talking about tactics... So this is why I'm using some of the faster weapons. Because I th really think that my goose would be cooked if I were to use some of those great swords. Because I have fought this guy so many times to know that he, as soon as he sees me with a great sword, he's going in for the parry. For which, I mean, he's attempting them now. Right? But they're not as predictable as they were had I been using a great sword. Alright. Alright. So I'm just kind of throwing some things out there. I'm trying to see what I can catch him with. He's... Now, at first I thought he was hitting me off with the poison arrows, but he's not. Which is a good thing for me, at least. I think later on he starts switching off to the poison arrows. <clears throat> now, now that I uh, have the ability to watch this... Um, one thing that I am noticing, I really should have threw out a lot more parries. Alright. The reason why I say that is because when he's using this balder, 
he's hit me with the R2 attack, which is that strong thrust, if you guys have noticed. And actually, we both have been using it. But I probably should have parried more, because I, I, I think I could have caught him with one of those, because he's really, if you notice, to the extent that he's using the boulder, he's not really hitting the R1 attack. And most of his attacks are the R2 strong attack, just like right there. But, I mean, it is what it is. You know, maybe we'll have a Rumble in the Jungle Volume 2 one of these days. And honestly, <laughs> this should be Volume 2 because we had a match in the past. I just decided not to upload it. Right? So, I'll let you guys make whatever assumptions you want to make based upon I, me not uploading the first Rumble in the Jungle. Right? I'll kind of leave that up to you. I won't put any implications out there as to whether, you know, I was the victor or he was. But either way it go, like I said before, it's all for fun. I mean, I just like playing this dude because he's tied me up so many times in the past. And you guys have seen it. I mean, I just said, you know what? I, got, I, have to, I just have to get a one-on-one -on -one with this guy. And as a matter of fact, speaking of short, he's probably one of the more famous guys who don't even have his own damn channel, right? I've seen him in several videos uh, against other uploaders. Uh, one is Jahama's one. I know he kind of did a, uh, you know, you know, he's into those armor showcase type deals. And I noticed he had, uh, I don't know, probably about 10 bouts against him, which was pretty good. So, yeah, this guy's kind of everywhere. Which is a good thing. It's probably why he's so good at berries, right? Because he's always PvP. All right, so let's kind of go back to it. So I'm trying to use the fire whip. And actually, in me playing against them, I'm kind of noticing things about my Pyromancer build. One thing, I think I need to go ahead and get that Fire Surge. Um, I've seen a lot of people use the Fire Surge. And because it seems as though it inflicted very small damage, I just never got to it. But, I mean, it's kind of cool to kind of soften up your opponent, you know. 70 here, 80 there, 100. I mean, it all helps in the end. You know, especially at the end of a match where those small points count. Alright, so we're back at it after briefly being interrupted. And if you guys notice, once I see him pull out the talisman, what I'll do is run up to him and then just, you know, kind of jump backwards. Because I'm figuring in my mind that once he sees me close the distance... You know, he figures to himself, okay, let me pop him off with the Wrath of Gods. But I anticipate that. Which is why, as soon as I close in the distance, once I see him with the talisman, I just flip backwards. Because, I, you know, I, I kind of expect him to cast it. So it's all good. Alright. Back at it. So, <laughs> after all these matches, you know, I, I guess uh, our agreement kind of... You know, he kind of went to, well, let's just say he decided to go back to his optimized build. Which is cool. I mean, it's no big deal, right? It's only a game. Me, personally, I don't like buffs. But, I mean, if that's his build, I guess that's what I just have to fight against. And actually, he's doing a rapier, right? And for all you rapier users, you guys will know that rapiers do not inflict a lot of damage. But if you notice, one hit. The amount of damage, and this is why I do not like uh, buff builds, right? Well, well, actually, let me take that back. It's not that I don't like buff builds. I don't like um, uh, compete. Well, I don't really want to say competing. I don't really like fighting against a person in an organized bout against a buff because, I mean, let's just say I pulled out my rapier, right, and I just had 45 uh, dexterity. I mean, would I be popping that guy off with 400 damage, 350, no, 500 damage, no, right, and I'm assuming that his Dark Moon Blade is at least plus two, right, alright, so let's just go ahead and try to finish this fight before the invader arrives, we don't want any interruptions, and he finishes me off with the Wrath of Gods, that was a nice move. 
Alright, so I'm back to my optimized build. Now, to the extent that you guys have checked out my first impressions of a new build video that I just did featuring my battle caster. Oh, and here's the stats for it just in case you guys were interested. Um, one thing that I talked about at the end of that vid is the weakness or one way to counter against this build. And if you guys would notice, good old short dude is doing a great job of the suggestion that I put out. That suggestion is, to the extent that you guys did not watch the vid yourself, that suggestion is to keep the distance close. All right? And this is what he's doing. You guys notice that? That was pretty cool, right? I really didn't know that the Wrath of Gods had the potential to deflect sorceries. But now I know. Okay, back to what I was saying. If you guys notice, I do not have the ability to cast because he is keeping the distance close. Right? So this is a good thing with regard to fighting a uh, either a faith mage, you know, like some call, or a battle caster, you know, what I would call. I can't do anything, right? If you notice, I am always on a run, so that's very good with regard to trying to counter the build that I'm using. Just so happened, I'm using the spear, right, to try to close in the distance myself. So I'm basically in the situation at this point to where I have the spear, which offers minimal damage. I mean, you guys will kind of notice that the next time I hit him, I actually get a clean hit. Okay, that's a blocked hit. Um, so yeah, I mean, because I can't cast. What can I do? He's keeping the distance close. So that's really a good tactic with regard to dealing with mages. You see? The, okay, that was 154. That don't count because that just means he had 154 left. But I'm going to use the spear again. And I want you guys just to see uh, how much damage this uh, butterfly horn inflicts. It's pretty sucky damage, right? I was probably better off using maybe a Silver Knight Spear or perhaps that, um, that small, well, no, that's not the small spear. I think that's the Ornstein, one of those spears. I think the, the Dragon Slayer Spear. Only thing is, I only have 16 strength and 12 dexterity, right? So I do not meet the minimum requirements for those weapons. <clears throat> All right, you guys see that 187? That sucks. You see that? I mean, that is pretty poor damage. Now, with regard to these last few matches, one thing that I think he is making a mistake in doing, because actually I could expl I could have exploited that, but I mean. I don't need to. He's kind of running into me a little too much. And the reason why I say that is all I have to do is back up a little bit, right? And while he's continuing to go forward, just instead of back up, just change my direction to going against him. And I will basically hit him with a lock BS. Right? But I'm not going to lock BS him. I mean, I think I hit him a couple times with the lock BS or, uh, a little later on in the vid. But even still, I think I only BS'd him with like 400 damage. He almost hit me with the tip of that balder too. That would have been ugly. But, yet and still, mission accomplished. <laughs> that sucks. Alright, so we're back at it again. Now, in my um, choice of weapons, I have an enchanted bastard sword, the great light, uh, the, uh, what is that? Moonlight great sword, yeah, that's what it is. I have an enchanted man serpent great sword. Now, all of those weapons have the potential to inflict a lot more damage than the uh, butterfly horn spear. The reason why <laughs> I chose not to use those weapons was for the exact same reason that I spoke about earlier. This guy's like awesome at parrying. 
right? And you see that 187? That's horrible. Um, like I was saying, this guy's awesome at pairing. And I already know. If I would have pulled out the Moonlight Greatsword, the Man Serpent uh, Greatsword, or the Enchanted Bastard Sword, I would probably be finished. So this is why the whole time, right, I've used these Dexterity Weapons and the Spear. He's got that buff going on. I don't know. That looks kind of long. I don't know if that's still the... Okay, that's a balder sword. So to the extent that he hits me, I'm in big trouble. And I think right there, that was a dead angle hit. Because... Actually, my, my shield was up. And he kind of got me anyway. So I don't know if it was a dead angle hit. Or it was just... Um, he was kind of behind me when he swung. And in his backswing, he kind of just hit me with the damage. But either way I go, oh well. Nice. Very nice. Alright guys, well this is the last match of the series. Alright. So let's just see what we can do at the end of it. And actually, um, after seeing all these matches, I don't know, what is it, about 10 matches? I think it's about 15, 15 to 18 matches, roughly just by looking at the timeline. Um, so I won't go ahead and, you know, talk over this last match. You guys can go ahead and check it out. All right, guys, so I hope you guys enjoyed the good old showcase of the Rumble in the Jungle. Catch you guys next time. Martyr's Brigade is...